This podcast is going to show you how to calculate the correlation coefficient, that is R, by doing it the long way but using a spreadsheet to help you. So I'm going to start by just uh, taking this data and copying it over here. Now, of course, in your project, you would have defined what X and Y are already. Make sure you do do that as part of your project. Don't just start using X and Y without any explanation. Okay, now, this is our formula to find the correlation coefficient. And we have three parts, as you can see. And then we have the three formulas for those three parts. So if we start with this top part, and it says x, y, and then remember this funny little symbol here means to sum. So it means sum the product of x and y and divide that by n, where n is the number of uh, pieces of data that you have. And then from that we will subtract the product of the mean of x and the mean of y. So what we might do is let's start with finding the mean of x and the mean of y. And so we're going to do that, we'll just do that at the bottom of the columns. Now, whenever you want to do some sort of calculation using a formula in Excel, you must put the equal sign. And then there are some inbuilt functions. So for the mean, it's just average. And you'll see when you start typing, that comes up. And then I can just highlight all the cells that I want to find the average of, and it will calculate it for me. Now, I can do the same for Y, or I can get the cell that I want, wait till I get the black, um, cross and does fill across and I can see if I look at the formula up here it's still got average and it's changed the cell references I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment all right uh, so we've got the mean of x and y so we'll use that later let's start with the multiplying the x and y so again I want to do a, like a formula so I put equals in and we're going to just use the cell references so I want to multiply that one and notice I use the asterisk or the star with that one and just press enter and there's the product again I don't need to type that out every single time I can just get the cell that I want get the black cross in the bottom right hand corner drag that down to as far as I need to go and it will automatically copy it for me and we can see there it's changed it this time to H19 and I19 and so on. So it's automatically changing the cell references to use the relevant pairs. Okay, so the next thing we have is, so then we've basically, uh, oh sorry, we need to then do the sum of these. So we want to add up this column here. So again, press equals because I want a formula and sum, you can see, comes up. That's a built-in function in Excel. And I just highlight the cells that I want to sum, press enter, and there's the sum of the products of each pair. So I've got that, I know what that is, and I've got these two. So that's already, I have enough information to do the calculation for that, which we'll come back and do in a moment. Let's work on this one. So this is for standard deviation. Now you may have already done this uh, previously, earlier on in your project, before you've got to the point where you're finding the correlation coefficient. So of course you don't need to do it again. But if you haven't, the formula again is that we take each data point and we subtract the mean from it. Then we square that answer. Then we must add up all of those and divide by the number of um, pairs of data points that we have and take the square root. So let's do this one step at a time. And I'm going to do each data point minus the mean. So this was the mean for x, 9.45. This is where you need to do something a little bit different. So again, we're going to put a formula in. So we need equals. And I want this cell minus. Now, I don't, I do want that cell. But if I copy it down, as we've seen before, it's going to keep changing that h24. And it'll change it to h25, 26 and there's nothing in those cells. I always want to use that number. So to do that, I need to put an extra, two extra little dollar signs in there. So a dollar sign before the column heading, so before the H, and a dollar sign before the row um, heading, so the 24. If I press enter, it does the calculation, then just fill down like I've done with all the other ones. And this time if we look, you can see here it's always saying it changes the first one 
So here this is in, I can see, row 18. So it changes the first to the data point, the x data point, but it's always subtracting this h24. And we can see it doesn't matter where I cl click there, it's always minus h24. So having those dollar signs helps, uh, it stops it from changing. So then I need to do a similar thing for the y. So I want to do, whoops, sorry, I need to put an equal sign because I want a formula and I want now the y minus the mean, so that value. But again, I don't want that to change every time. So I need to put a dollar sign in front of the i and a dollar sign in front of the 24. And drag down so it fills down. Do a quick check. It has kept it as i24 every time. So that's good. Now it says that we need to square each of these. So all I want to do is square each of these numbers. So again, equals, and I want to take this answer, and we do the little pointy hat for squared to the power of two, and then drag it down. And I can see they're real positive, so that looks good. And then I want to do the same for this one. So equals, and I want this answer to the power of two, and again, drag it down. Okay, so that looks pretty good because, uh, oh, one more thing I need to do, because then it says once you squared them all, you need to sum them. So I need, for those last two columns, I need to sum them. So equals, sum, and if you click on there, it comes up with the brackets, and highlight the cells, and press enter, and I can actually just fill across it. Just do a quick check. It's now summing N2, which is that one, to N21, which is what I want. Okay, so I have that sum, I have that sum, I have that sum, uh, I have that product, or I can work out that product. So we're now ready to actually do some calculations with this.